to be able to answer the question how to market PDFs, we really need to understand why PDF. So to give you a bit of an overview of uh, what I'll cover, I'll go a bit into PDF, as I'm sure quite a lot of you know about the format um, a lot already. Um, I'll also cover some unique and interesting perspectives about the format, leading into the core value prop of PDF and also what its implications are for the future of the format. Um, just before this, I want to tell you a bit about our company, um, PDFtron. We're a leading provider of cross-platform, feature-rich document processing technology for PDF, Office, and over 30 other file formats. Uh, we've been doing this since 1998, and uh, since then we've helped over 5,000 companies worldwide, including innovative startups, government institutions, and Fortune 500 businesses create document experiences that users love. So to start, I guess here's a bit about PDF. Um, as all of you know, and as we heard a lot today, PDF is one of the most common file formats on the planet. Um, and according to Google Trends, you've probably seen this in Duff's presentation as well, um, the interest for PDF seems to be growing steadily over time. Um, and there are trillions of PDFs out there with billions of PDFs produced uh, every day. In comparison, interest for EPUB, um, again, known to be um, or has been potentially a competitor to PDF, uh, has been uh, declining ever since it peaked its in popularity uh, a few years back. And I'll not go into sort of the reasons why that happened. Um, however, as you'll see during the presentation, I'll go a lot over certain reasons why PDF is strong, and that will inherently bring out um, um, the reasons for why PDF, why sorry, why EPUB um, is not as strong as PDF. So basically, I'll not go into further statistics, as Duff has presented those quite well in his presentation. Um, but I'll basically just say PDFs are everywhere. Uh, they're used in airplane cockpits, in courtrooms, in clinical trials, um, in government websites. We run into PDFs uh, in libraries uh, when we do online research, whether we get emails with PDF attachments or whether we sign documents. More and more PDFs occupy our digital storage. And even more frequently, and even if we don't know it, um, we actually use PDF when printing or faxing documents, or even sending physical mail, or collaborating with others online. But why is PDF so pervasive? What is the key to its success? And why is it so important? The answers to these questions may not be immediately apparent, uh, especially because the surprising thing is um, that uh, on the one hand, you know, PDF success, adoption, and growth over the last few years, and on the other hand, uh, how people actually uh, think of the format. Uh, John Warnock, co-founder of Adobe, uh, once recalled in an interview about the launch of PDF, uh, the world didn't get it. They didn't understand how important sending documents around electronically was going to be. And 25 years later, very few can say that they love PDF, but we all need it. Why? Um, many of us wonder why do we need PDF when we're writing doc word, uh, documents in Word or using GDoc or you know, whatever, fill in the blank. Why are we even talking about a file format in the increasingly formatless world? Question to you guys, how many of you have abandoned your music or movie collections in favor of streaming services? Put up your hands. I certainly have. <laughs> how about a GDoc file? Have you ever looked in it to it uh, on your G drive? Probably you know, uh, or maybe if you've looked into it, that it's not really a file per se. Uh, it's simply a text file uh, with a link to a URL, and it cannot really exist outside of G Drive. And as one of the presentations actually mentioned, I think it was Duff, um, it's interesting that um, Google, even Google Trends, actually stopped um, allowing searches of file types um, on Google Trends. So why did they do that? Um, it's interesting. Uh, PDF also irritates many industry experts, uh, such as well-known usability guru Jacob Nielsen, who once declared PDF as unfit for human consumption. <laughs> and also science publishing researchers who once described the format as a hamburger were trying to turn back into a cow. Um, adding to the confusion is the fact that the format evolved over the last 25 years, piling layers and layers of features 
and thus also complexity to it. PDF continued to adapt, however, and certainly this is one of its most, um, I guess, strongest um, um, things of why it became successful, and the fact is that it's, it has a lot of flexibility to accommodate to an ever-increasing range of capabilities and use cases, such as text search, bookmarks, um, forms, geotags, JavaScript, 3D, movies and sounds, and so much more. But I'll not go over all of these technical details here. Um, I'll try to keep it a little bit more high level and to really understand uh, why PDF is so successful. And in order to actually do that, we need to kind of peel away the complexity, to peel away the layers of features and all these other requirements and go f straight for the core value prop of PDF. So the most simplified explanation is that PDF is electronic paper. Many of us actually take PDF so much for granted that it's hard to actually recognize and appreciate um, the value proposition of paper. Um, and actually in the other presentation we heard about the fact that um, you know, ultimately the goal of PDF is that we'll always need a paper equivalent. But how far can we take this analogy? And at the same time, can PDF transcend the limitations of paper? So really the core value prop of PDF is that like paper, its essential purpose is to provide a cheap, simple, efficient, and reliable communication of visual information chunks. So true enough, like paper, PDF is relatively cheap to produce and to view. It's cheaply produced via print drivers, and it's cheaply viewed with universal viewing available across devices and operating systems. Besides built-in support on ma all major platforms, uh, we also have many of advanced free viewers available on every platform nowadays. Like paper, PDF is a globally accepted standard um, that is used by billions of people. And like paper, PDF is self-contained and it's simple to share. After all, the letter P in PDF stands for portable. What that really means is that anything that you need to reliably render a PDF is contained in a package. So including things like fonts, or at least for the most part, uh, color profiles, etc. Unlike a loose collection of web pages and associated resources, you're really sharing a single file. And that makes it simple to share in the first place. Like paper, PDF is also lightweight and doesn't take much space, uh, with support for scalable vector graphics, advanced compression schemes such as JBIG2 and JBIG2000, and font subsetting. PDF is actually faster and cheaper to transmit and store. It also has a much smaller memory footprint when it comes to rendering compared to modern, modern alternatives such as SVG or HTML or EPUB. And the content is paginated which means it can be rapidly accessed in constant time. For computer scientists, this is O1 versus ON. Another key, key value prop or layer of the key value prop is that like paper, PDF is durable. And in fact, it's even more durable. Um, with PDFA, the PDF su subset of the PDF standard intended for archiving, it is the hope that PDF will last much longer and as it does not s suffer from the wear and tear that paper has. In terms of durability, PDF is in fact a sharp contrast to the ephemeral nature of the web and application formats. The web is constantly changing. Um, like we mentioned, GDoc is not really, it cannot be really seen as a durable file format because it doesn't exist outside of the application. Um, also, legacy file formats um, are linked to applications. Um, and so when those applications become legacy, many times the format becomes a legacy format as well. Another key value prop is that, like paper, most few people feel safe reading PDFs. Um, I mean, how many of you would open a Word file in an email from an unknown source? Anybody? Probably not. <laughs> how about PDFs? A few more? Okay, me too. Um, yeah, basically, you know, it may not be 100% safe, but generally people uh, tend to feel a bit safer uh, accessing PDF files. Um, there's not as many viruses or malware attached to PDF files and people have this expected standard viewing behavior. 
without pop-ups and unusual interfaces. They think of it generally as a reliable format and great for offline usage. And while there's still a lot to be done in that area, which I will touch upon a bit later in the presentation, um, yeah, it's considered a fairly secure uh, file format. Like paper, PDF makes it simple for people to get on the same page with a reliable and consistent frame of reference. The human brain uh, perceives the graphical objects on a page, including the document, as a sort of terrain, a landscape. And the static map is um, quite important for comprehension, for structure and semantic uh, recognition, and it also helps us communicate more effectively via page numbers, spatial positioning information, as well as accurate rendering. There are some downsides, obviously, um, that are similar between paper and PDF, and that is that it is difficult to stretch um, both paper and PDF, obviously. Um, it's hard to reflow content, and it's hard to accommodate pages with different aspect ratios. It is also, for the same reason, uh, for both PDF and paper, difficult to repurpose and edit. Um, sure, we can redact and such, but it is really um, not meant for word processing or any heavy um, editing in mind. It is also, similarly to that, applies uh, conversion. Um, basically, unless it's straight image cloning, um, it's actually very hard to do conversion for PDF to eFlobo, EPUB, or Word. It's actually quite, um, quite fraught with difficulties. But ultimately, like paper, PDF is our ground truth. Um, it's the objective reality. Just like on a canvas, the paint is either present on a given spot or it's not. In comparison, semantics is highly subjective and context dependent. In fact, most of our education goes into interpreting document semantic structures, such as children flip books, tax forms, music scores, encyclopedias, and even novels. There's no university agreed on semantics, just endless variations. That is probably due to the fact that semantics um, is largely anchored in culture and language, which, like the web platform, is constantly changing. For example, there are many documents of ancient cultures um, that are hard to decode simply because we're missing semantic information and knowledge to interpret them. Similarly, um, even reading something relatively more modern, such as a short paragraph from Shakespeare requires many annotations to decipher and to understand the meaning behind the text. To underline the last value prop, um, I would like to actually make a point about the fact that semantic information is not part of the PDF essence. And what I mean by semantic information is the meaning and logical relationships between graphical objects on the page. Yes, unlike paper, uh, some semantic information may be present in PDFs, such as many PDFs are searchable these days. It is possible to tag and embed metadata and semantic structure. And in the near future, we may even be able to embed HTML, data, and even JavaScript in PDF as part of the next generation PDF. But on a big scale of things, it did not happen. Today, um, the vast majority of PDFs, the trillions of PDFs out there, simply do not have structure or tags embedded in them, and the trend does not seem to be changing much. The fact that many PDFs are searchable these days is actually, in fact, an amazing achievement, and one of the things that we're, or PDF is better at than paper. Uh, the main reason is, uh, for this is adoption of Unicode, um, a universal character encoding, and the fact that uh, many PDFs are digitally born these days, um, not uh, not scanned. However, unlike a s set of characters, an alphabet, which is finite, uh, the set of words or sentences or structure you can create using these finite set of characters is absolutely infinite. And so due to this sheer complexity um, and the fact that we're constantly changing semantic structure, we will unlikely arrive at an ISO standard an equivalent of Unicode of document structure. And secondly, um, another reason why semantic information um, is not part of the PDF essence is the fact that adding additional requirements for inclusion of semantic information in PDFs introduces tensions with other value propositions of PDF, such as simple and cheap creation, durability, efficiency, and security. 
for example, creating PDFs with tags is certainly more costly, uh, requires more dev time, and in many cases not possible um, due to the fact that PDFs are still produced via printer drivers um, by clicking print to PDF. So for these reasons, requiring the structure to be present in PDFs, um, such as as part of PDF UA or PDF A or next generation PDF, um, technically goes against the grain of paper and its electronic counterparts. To sum up, PDF's loose semantic requirements are both its greatest strength in terms of supporting the core value prop of PDF, but strangely enough, it's also its greatest weakness in uh, enabling the format to evolve beyond what it does uh, today. But why are we talking about the core value prop? Why is it important? Well, I think it's the key to understand, to market, and to be able to evolve PDF in the right direction. It's really the answer to why PDF. Understanding the core value prop helps us not only to better market the technology, but also decide on the future of the technology and to be able to better shape it for the continuously evolving needs of users and the next generation of applications. The PDF ecosystem is huge, as we mentioned before, and we can leverage this and we can use this strong foundation that we've built over the last 25 years but we really need to know where we're going and where we need PDF to be in the future to meet new, new market needs. So given the key value prop of PDF, are we there yet? Do we know what PDF is and what it should be in the future? Um, as of yet, not quite. But we do know that in order to evolve it, we need to increase its strengths and also eliminate or at least decrease its weaknesses. So for example, if we're on the same page that PDF's greatest strength is that it's reliable, then we really have to uh, ask ourselves, is it really 100% reliable? And again, the answer is not quite, not really. Um, missing fonts or missing color spaces uh, in documents can actually affect document viewing experience. Um, we try to address this as part of PDFA uh, subset of the PDF standard. So can we not include some of these PDFAB provisions in the core ISO 32000 standard to, to be able to say that PDF is 100% reliable? We also talked about PDF security. And while you know, generally many of us consider it a safe file format, there's still some weaknesses. Um, you know, people still want uh, not just to access PDF safely, but to at the same time have a consistent, predictable um, viewing experience. Yet we're still um, seeing a lot of uh, vulnerabilities and, and uh, security exploits in PDF. And in fact, the last one was just last April. So can we make PDF more safe, more predictable, and more secure? And also, at the same time, if PDF's greatest weakness is its semantic structure, is the semantic structure, uh, can we address it without undermining uh, the value prop of PDF? Uh, over the last 20 years, the industry spent a lot of time um, looking into ways um, around this weakness. And um, the one approach, which has a long history, starting with marked content, tags, and embedded files, is essentially to continue the effort of adding explicit structure in PDF. And this is a lot of the work behind next generation PDF. However, at the same time, with trillions of documents um, in the wild that are untagged and um, many more still to come, is it really the only solution? Uh, is it going to be a change, game changer? It may not actually be the only answer. Um, with recent advancements uh, to AI, however, and machine learning, could we not have machines help us transcend the page, transcend the limitations of PDF? Um, you know, solve answers, uh, solve issues such as reflow or repurposing PDF, uh, allowing PDFs to be reliably viewed across devices and um, help with complex data recognition and extraction from PDFs, among other issues. While at the same time building on PDF's key value prop and without necessarily needing to fix PDF. Many mobile viewers, in fact, nowadays support some sort of reflow capability. They're obviously far from perfect, 
Um, but you know, this technology is rapidly evolving and rapidly improving. And at the same time, users are still sort of working around it if, um, if, it, doesn't, if it doesn't meet their needs. Ultimately, whatever approach we take, um, whether it's working on the PDF spec and evolving the format that way, um, or working with other technologies to help PDF transcend the page, we need to ensure that we keep a balance. We need to ensure that we don't undermine the core value prop of PDF, but instead build on its strengths to support PDF and the huge ecosystem that we've built. Um, and essentially, we wouldn't want to undermine or do anything that um, downgrades or uh, even destroys the value prop that we've built and the success that we've built over the last 25 years. And at the same time, we also need to ensure that any additions or changes we make to the PDF spec will also meet the broadest future market needs and the associated use cases and workflows that users will demand in the future as well. So not just five years, 10 years, but 25 years and plus. Um, it is definitely a matter of a balance. And while I do not have the answers for you, I'm not sure if next generation will solve everything or if we can count on AI. I do know that we're rapidly making advancements uh, on that front on AI and machine learning and even other technologies that are evolving, whether it's blockchain or other things you may hear about tomorrow. Um, but yeah, basically we need to keep a balance between those two and probably in the interim we'll still need to do a lot of work on the PDF spec because no matter what we do, it will help, if anything, those new technologies repurpose PDF and help it transcend the page. So with that said, um, I'll let you imagine along with me what this future might be like and what we can do to build on PDF strengths and um, hopefully meet the future needs of end users out there and uh, the next generation of applications. So thank you very much and I'll open up to questions. Thanks.